guys, we are back for our next monthly installment, I guess, of the Sandy City Morning Show. So I'm your regular host, Mayor Bradburn, and joining me today uh, is our Public Works Director, Mike Gladbach. So um, <coughs> and we are actually here in his new building. So part of that uh, was to, and we'll, we'll have more videos and photos of the new place to come, but wanted to give Mike uh, just a minute today to introduce himself, uh, the department, um, as well as the building and kind of what's going on here. And so as we wait for some of you to kind of trickle in and, and join us here, we'll go ahead and turn maybe a minute or two over to Mike to just introduce himself. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, as the Mayor said, I'm Mike Gladbach. Um, just a short background on me. Uh, I grew up in Wisconsin, so I'm a Badger. I'm also a uh, avid Packer fan and stockholder. Uh, very important. Um, after school, I, I spent 20 you should years. You your cheese head. I should have. I have one. Yeah. Uh, I spent 20 years in the service and retired. And uh, Sandy hired me. I've been with Sandy for almost 17 years. Uh, I spent uh, 14 of them as a city engineer, and then a couple years ago was made the public works director. So that's kind of the short of my background. Public Works is an organization that uh, we, we kind of handle the surface. Utilities handles the underground, we handle the surface. Uh, we're, we're, we're made up of about 56 people. We've got three divisions. Um, we've got Streets Division, which is half the department. These are the guys that you see, they just finished up the bulk waste collection, the spring bulk waste collection. They're, they're now broken out into their uh, crews where they're out doing concrete paving and tree trimming. Uh, we have engineering division led by the, uh, the city engineer, and uh, there are about a dozen folks. There's uh, four engineers in there, and uh, they've got a technician, inspectors, a surveyor, and some other folks in, in that division. They handle all the capital projects in the city, and they also coordinate for a, a lot of federal aid projects that we do through the Wasatch Front uh, Regional uh, Council. Um, Last division really is uh, our, our fleet maintenance division. We maintain, we actually go through the purchasing process and maintain the, uh, the fleet for the city. Uh, there's a dozen folks in there that, that include about eight mechanics. Uh, and uh, they, they take care of about 600 plus pieces of equipment for the city. Um, and they have their own little Napa store, which is kind of unique. Um, that's, we switched over to that a few years ago instead of trying to manage you know, hundreds every month of parts orders individually and writing all these checks, we centralized it, found out that uh, it costs the same, but the real savings is in time. Uh, these guys are faster, and uh, we can free up a person to do uh, other things like maintenance scheduling and things like that. Of course, we have admin, and uh, I think I left out our transportation section or part engineering. Some of you might be familiar with uh, Brittany Ward and her crew. She's got the sign shop that, that uh, does all the signage throughout the city. We fabricate our own signs and install them. So that's what the It's not an easy like. process. No. I spent a lot of time over there. That's and, right. Uh, it takes, takes some getting used to to make yeah. one of those. So. Yeah, the mayor made some signs one morning. and uh, that, I don't know if any of those signs are going to go up. <laughs> so lettering was backwards. It was all cut out. Yeah. It was, it, kudos to them. They do a great job of it. Sign something like 500 signs a year. Oh yeah, yeah at least that, right? Like that. Yep, yep. So it's a it's a busy place. It is. The building the mayor mentioned. This is the new public works admin part of the of the complex. Uh, we just finished this up a few weeks ago and moved in. We're, we're they're going to be dragging the, the temporary construction trailers out of here hopefully today. Um, and what you're looking at is really a like I said, it's a it's a modern municipal administrative building is really the short of it. Um, we were really lucky, we had a heck of a, a team design and construct this, JRCA architects and then Ascent Construction. Just, you know, they, those guys were heads, and above, heads above everybody else, really good team. But uh, you have a building here that's designed to last 50 years. When you look at it on the surface, you see just typical sheetrock and things like that. But it's really, like I told the mayor, it's the bones. You have a concrete floor, it's an industrial area, so you know we track mud in here. Um, but inside we have a steel frame, this is not a wood frame building. So you've got those sorts of things. The heating and ventilation systems are state of the art, a little different, more efficient. Actually, uh, we should be saving on our, our utility bills about 15 to 20% per year based on what we've been 
estimating on a system. We look forward to, to a, a future second phase where we can get equipment indoors and rebuild our maintenance piece. You can see behind us some little trinkets from the fire. That's what caused us to get in this situation. Uh, about two and a half years ago, we had a, <coughs> a fire started by a piece of equipment. And in fact, that's the transmission casing right there from the truck that started the fire. And uh, that's the steering wheel from the truck up there uh, that was right next to that truck. So that gives you a feel for what the equipment looked like after the fire. We lost a dozen trucks in that fire, so it was pretty traumatic, um, as well as our office space and everything else. So that's kind of, that, that's what started everything. That was the catalyst, was that fire. Um, not sure what. No, that's great. And it's a huge testament to you and your department. In the last couple of years, you guys have literally been operating uh, out of a, a trailer. Yeah. So, and our service level has remained extremely high. So it's a, a huge shout out and thank you to you guys for your, thank your you. high level of service. So, all right. Well, thank you for that introduction, Mike, and thanks for hosting us today. So I think we're probably about there. Do we have any live questions? Not yet. yet? Okay. So we did get a few questions that have come in kind of throughout the week. So we'll go ahead and start with those. So go ahead and read the question and then I'll, uh, between Mike and I, we'll, we'll tag team the answer here and hopefully get you the information that you need. So while you're out there though, if you're watching, feel free to chime in with the question live and we'll be happy to answer it. So, okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, jump in here. So Monica Zoltansky asked, excited for the new curbside glass recycling to start. Will we need special bins? Yes, we will. We will need special and bins. they will be provided by Momentum. Their Momentum is the company that's got the contract for, for the curbside uh, glass recycling. So they'll be providing those. So if you sign up and you can do that online, you can do it, you, you can link to their site for signing up right through the, uh, the Sandy City website. And maybe um, we'll try to be proactive and just that's been out there on social media, but we'll put yeah. it out on this post. We, we can share that link so you can put it yeah. out. And yeah, our media guys have been terrific as far as yeah. getting that out. But you know, even if you haven't seen that, you can just drop down to uh, to the uh, public works page, and and it's right on there. There's a link right there that'll take you right to them too. We've tried to do this, you know, all throughout the website to make sure you can get to these guys and sign up. Yeah, we're very happy about this. Yeah, we're excited. I, I, I think last I heard we had over 500 right. uh, signups, so it's going really well. I think Momentum said it's one of the biggest opt-ins they've seen from a municipality. So, yeah, that's what they told us. So them. things are picking up, so keep yeah. it going. It's great. Um, one of the things I know some of my neighbors are doing too, if you feel like you don't have enough glass, I believe it picks up every other week, yep. um, but some of my neighbors are uh, just going in together on a can, so it's uh, $8 a month for the fees. You can split it uh, amongst yourselves if you don't feel like you use enough glass for to fill up a whole can. Um, anyway, so keep keep at it. It's great. Okay, so another question. Um, Matthew Foley asked, "What can be done about all the street racing and souped-up cars speeding around neighborhoods north of 90th South on and around 150th West?" So uh, just so you know, um, Matthew, I've also <laughs> witnessed that um, we see people gathering quite a bit at the Expo Center and then kind of breaking out from there. So I believe police has, has jumped on and answered this question as well about uh, some things you can do if you see it happening in real time. Um, and so we'll kind of refer you back to their answer that's on this thread. Um, but from a, a public work standpoint, I think Mike can maybe talk a little bit about just when, there, when we do have kind of speed issues in a given area. So let's say it's not necessarily you know, a rally type thing, right. but just in your neighborhood, what kind of speed control things and that's, that's a really good question because uh, actually uh, we do get calls throughout the city uh, quite often about people concerned about cut through traffic going fast, that sort of thing. We want speed bumps, that sort of thing. And uh, although we're not a fan of speed bumps, there's other ways to do that. And so call us. To, we're at 568-2999 uh, and we'll get you linked into our traffic section. And what they'll do is they'll do a little study for that area. And they'll, they'll get the, the real data. They will set up equipment out there uh, with radar and, and get how fast people are going, when they're going, how many there are, everything. We can, we can collect all that information and really nail down the problem, the real problem. Where is that problem? Is it on this block or this block or that street or that street? 
and then take a look at what we can do. It could be as simple as putting in driver feedback signs in that flash and they say, hey, you're going too fast. Um, it, it could be other things. We've done things uh, uh, that are aesthetically pleasing, bulb outs on the sides of the roads, plant the tree, kind of just choke down the road. Um, we don't do that as often. I think the driver feedback signs have been very successful in the city. We've got a number of those out there. But call us. That's good. Okay. And that, that, that's true. That's an issue. That's been a concern for years is the uh, uh, illegal dumping from folks from either other neighborhoods or outside the city even. Um, and then, of course, dropping things off that we don't collect because we do put out the notices, you know, for each cycle, spring and fall, telling you what we do and don't collect. So the tire, that errant tire, um, and, you know, that's a very common story. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's a bad thing that somebody dumped that in your front yard. Mm -hmm. uh, the best thing you can do is take it to a tire shop. It might cost you two, three dollars to, yeah. to let them take it, mm -hmm. um, but that's the right thing to yeah. do. You know, don't pass it along. Yeah, and I know our code enforcement does take calls and looks into illegal dumping uh, in your neighborhood. And anyway, so if you're having some issues, always reach out and let us know. We'll, we'll do everything we can to help you. But. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate your guys doing uh, both ways cleanup. It's a huge service to our neighborhoods, and I know it's a big drain on your guys' department, but we sure we sure appreciate it. So, how we uh, anything coming in line? We're having some technical difficulties. The Wi-Fi was going in and out, but it's back on. So. Oh, okay. Do we know kind of where it cut out or what what we missed? Yeah. I guess when you replay the video, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, you're seeing how the sausage is made here. So we're not cutting in and out, we're just having some technical difficulties. Okay, so Brad Wells asked, uh, and probably in the same vein, I guess, of maybe both ways cleanup, how do I dispose of an old toilet? Or there may be a number of things that, you know, we sent out that card bef before bulk waste to try to go through these things about what you can and can't put out there. But something like an old toilet or something that possibly we don't take. We'll take them, anything. actually. We'll oh, take yeah. a toilet. You know, it's a ceramic. We'll, okay. we'll take that. Um, and if you can wait till the fall cleanup, you know, put it out and we'll take it. If you don't want to wait till the fall cleanup, you, you can always take it to the landfill. Okay. Um, we don't have any kind of special collection or anything like that right now where we would come get it from you. So those, those are really your two options right now. Okay, awesome. Okay, let's see. Um, we have a live question. Oh. Yeah, we have one question from Alan Gates. Um, he found sprinklers on at a park on 17th East and 114th South at 3.30 p.m. Does Sandy adhere to watering laws? That is his question. Yes, so the short answer is we do our best to make sure that our sprinkling systems are running as efficiently as possible, and for the most part that means not watering during the middle of the day. Um, that being said, occasionally we have an errant uh, system we have a program that malfunctions or doesn't run at the right time so um, this is a uh, shameless plug for our app <laughs> but Alan thank you for reporting that one of the things you can do is take a picture of that sprinkler so if you have our app as you're driving by the park and you see a, a sprinkler on or you see a geyser you know sprinkler that's broken if you're in the app you can just take a picture of it and just hit the drop down for sprinkler repair, I think that's actually one of the drop downs, um, and click that and it will get routed right to our parks department who can come out and that way we can track uh, and you can track where it is in the process, when it gets rectified, how long it took, etc. Mm -hmm. So, um, but absent that, yes, we will, so now that you've notified us of that verbally, uh, we'll make sure we'll put that in our follow-up folder, we'll make sure our guys check on that today, make sure that sprinkler system is functioning appropriately, but yes. We absolutely try to conserve and try to be as efficient as we can with our water usage. So, But that being said, we have 32 parks and several hundred acres to maintain, so uh, we do have an errant guy here or there. So. Okay, great question, though. Okay, so maybe what we'll do just um, before we wrap up, um, is there any, any kind of... Uh, updates you want to give on any projects, anything coming up for public works that might be important? Are there any important uh, road projects happening in the near term? Well, project-wise, you, you, in fact, I'm, I'm kind of glad you asked about that because just on a random basis, yeah. we're doing work all throughout the city, our yeah. in-house crews. And, and I mentioned before that we have a concrete crew, a paving crew, a tree trimming crew. Right. And 
every day they're in a different location. You know, they have a different mission that day. They either patch potholes right. or pave a section out or repair a sidewalk or trim trees in a park strip. Um, the thing to do that I would suggest to the public is just when you're in the area, when you see them, yeah. avoid them if you can. Yeah. Uh, if you can't avoid them and you've got to pass through that area, yeah. do what the guy says. If, you, if there's a flagger out there, mm -hmm. obey the flagger and drive slow. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Yeah. These guys are trying to do their job and, uh, and then go home at night at the end of the day. And, yeah. and you can help us with that yeah. you know, just by being as cautious as they're trying to be. Yeah. And t talking about kind of self-policing each other, and another just word of caution around bulk waste cleanup. Yeah. A lot of times you see cars just flying by our front loaders and our dump yeah. trucks, and and it, it scares, scares me sometimes just watching. We've had, I know, a few accidents over the years. It, surprisingly, yeah. it, it, not many. it's not many, but cool. the potential there for th that type of heavy machinery and, and cars yeah in our neighborhoods. So the more space we can give them, the, you know, yeah. the slower we can go around them. That's all helpful. Um, in terms of projects, I know a couple that I've gotten questions about and we all are have kind of noticed over the years. There's mm -hmm. the historic Sandy project that has been kind of the the curb and gutter issue and the just yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. and it's been multiple phases. I don't know what yeah. phase we're in now exactly, but well, we're I think we're getting close, <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I think I probably get asked about this road project more than any other. Um, you tell us kind of where, do yeah. we know? 8800, like any of the roads in, in, in the old part of town and the historic Sandy is a challenge. Yeah, and I think the people who live there can see it. They can speak to it. Mm -hmm. Every block looks different mm -hmm. as you drive through there. The road's higher than the sidewalk. The sidewalk's <laughs> higher than the road. There is no sidewalk. Um, the sidewalk and the road kind of look like they're one and the same. You know, all those issues. That's what we're trying to fix. That's the underlying thing is trying to standardize that and make it safe. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, when we go in there, like 8800, it attracted utility companies. They looked at it and they go, oh, you're gonna take the surface off. That saves them money. Mm -hmm. Sewer district, we partnered with the sewer district next door and they replaced the sewer line and made a main trunk through there. And they, you know, cause it's gonna help them save money. Right thing to do, mm -hmm. you know, put in a new sewer line. We all benefit from that. Um, what didn't get coordinated, uh, cause they came along a little later when they saw us out there working was, uh, you, you're seeing them out there now, a gas company. They came in and said, wow, we've got a high pressure line through there that really needs to be replaced. Can you can you pause? It's like, well, yeah, because yeah, otherwise they're going to come in there and cut a brand new road, right? right? Yeah. We don't want them to do that. Yeah. So it caused it to take longer than, than it should have. Um, yeah. And we apologize for that. We, you know, we do the best we can on that and coordinate that. Upside is, didn't drive our costs up. The utilities are covering those those costs, but they're they they start they start paving next week, okay. so the end is near, yeah. and then they'll have it wrapped up by the end of June. Good. Okay, and then uh, yeah, that's probably good. There's some other. I know some people have heard about the the. Uh, I guess we call it 9270, but it's that road on the on the north side of Jordan Commons. It's kind of right across from the stadium, and I yeah. know we're going to start realignment on that. Yeah, I guess fairly soon. That's an exciting project. Yeah. We've been looking at that for a while because yeah. you know where the signal is that go that allows for people to go right. or, or pedestri pedestrians to cross over to Real. Right. And yeah. this road 9270 north of the theaters is kind of a weird That's place. Weird, yeah. You know, you, you want to evenly space your signals, right. and this road's offset. So yeah. we're looking to get that realigned to that signal and, yeah. and do that right. Yeah. That'll be really helpful on those yeah. game days. So yeah. All right. Well, um, and then just uh, in terms of future, oh, do we have a no? Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, oh yes, we do. We have one from Bridget Irwin. Um, she asked if there are any plans to beautify historic Sandy. Main Street has so much potential, and I know we yeah. talked a little bit about that. So, yeah. um, any other further yes. plans? Yeah. So we'll have some more conversations around this too when we do a Facebook Live with Nick and our Economic Development uh, Department, but. There, yes, so the short answer is Historic Sandy along State Street there, we've all kind of, you know, as you drive through that, it is an older part of town and there are some businesses there, but, but several have fallen into disrepair, or gone out of business, and there's, so yeah, we, uh, over time we would love to rebuild that area and make it kind of our, you've seen this in several other municipalities, 
Provo's done a really good job of rebuilding kind of their older downtown parts. Ogden's done a great job of redoing kind of their historic 23rd Avenue area or 25th Avenue, whatever, which one it is. But we feel like we have a great opportunity here in Historic Sandy to kind of re, mm -hmm. uh, revamp and, and, um, and put a new face on our historic area. So yes, we're going to try to incentivize businesses to come in there. Like Mike mentioned, some of those roads are getting cleaned up and will be repaved. And so yes, over time, we, we really want to make that uh, a vibrant place again, part of Sandy. So more to come on that though. We'll have a, a Facebook Live with Nick uh, in a, in, over the next couple months. So we'll address some of those questions and development around the city. So, okay. Well, thank you guys so much for joining in, Mike. Thanks for hosting us. And then just um, coming up, when's the, do you know the date of the ribbon cutting? Do we no, have one we set haven't yet? set one. Okay. We were just talking. Kelly and I were talking okay. about it earlier. We'll set one. Make sure the administration's okay. linked in, and then then I'll move forward from Perfect. there. So um, keep an eye out for that. We'll do yep. a ribbon cutting for this building, but we'll have more videos and shots of it. And we, and we want to do like an open house as yeah, part of that so that the public can come. Yeah. You know, instead of a bunch of dignitaries yeah. coming in and having sandwiches when we're done, <laughs> let the public come in, yeah. let them walk in here and see the building, see what they paid for. That'd be good. That'll yeah. be great. All right, you guys. Well, as always, thank you for allowing both Mike and I to serve you. It, it's truly a pleasure. And we will be back next month with uh, some more city info. So thank you.